Okay, I got a 2012 Chrysler Town & Country. I'm getting a code and then uh, when it, when it's you get going a few miles and it warms up, you get, uh, it's been kicking it into limp mode. I got a code of uh, PO76A, it says solenoid, shift solenoid H. Um, so this has the 62 TE transmission and there's a lot of these, sounds like a lot of these problems uh, I've been looking at online. So I'm going to attempt to uh, remedy that. I've tried, I flushed and re uh, filled with fluid what I could drain out of there, out of the transmission, put a new filter. Didn't seem to help, got the code again. So I ordered uh, on Amazon, I would supposedly re refurbished one um, so what I'm doing now is a uh, online this uh, I think it's a motor city mechanic he's got this uh, you can print out this this chart here and you can uh, read read the uh, resistance on these to see if the solenoids are good so this is the one I got in the I got in the mail. I don't remember what site. One day shipping, like 140 bucks or something. So pin uh, pin 10 here is the uh, common positive, and then uh, I don't know if it matters. We'll switch it out. We'll put the uh, positive on there. You think you're just testing the resistance. So if you go around, so on uh, number two terminal, right up here. Getting 1.7, should be 1.6 to 1.8. Just go around number seven terminal is over here. Should be 1.6 to 1.8. That's good. Number 11 is right next to that. Should be 300. Should be 300. Should be 300. the guy sent me a good one this bottom uh, shift solenoids I think are between these two plates which I don't think I need to take off let's reuse the bolts for this so I'm gonna go remove the old one and I'm gonna check it check these against that and then uh, See what the difference is and uh, see if it actually fixes the issue or not all right i got it up on uh blocks there yeah I'll just get this out of the way uh it's solenoid pack is down under there there's a you gotta take that whole cover off Got a sound barrier cover on there, and then the covers underneath it. A bunch of eight millimeter bolts around it, around the perimeter. So I think this hose comes up, or this tank. Pull this out of the way, give us some more room. Unplug that, and starts taking bolts off. The dipstick right there, or 
there's no dipstick, just a cap. That's uh, that's on there too. So. So this is just slipped in there, you just pull up on it, pull it out in front of this hose here, and well, I guess a guy could take the, all this battery tray and stuff off, but I think I should have enough room. I don't think I need to take these transmission line hoses off either. Should be able to get at everything. Unplug that. Took the negative off the battery. I did take this hose out, bent it out of the way, and I uh, covered that to keep it from dripping. So now I will get that sound cover off. All right, here we are underneath, and. Uh, there's three of these uh, 10 millimeter studs, one here, one here, and one on the top, up there. And they have these uh, like star nut, you know, these little retainer things to keep this uh, insulation slab sound, sound uh, barrier cover on. Then you just work this off, you gotta work it up over the dipstick and get it out. And then those are 10 millimeter the studs and then the rest of these are eight millimeter so we'll work on that all right there it is with it off there's enough room to get it out of there lift it up tilt it back and pull it up so here it is see where the studs went through it you always put a little nut on there if those retainers get broken All right, so the eight millimeter ones, any combination of these extensions and something like this should be able to get you at them all. Once you get all the bolts on, I just took this uh, scraper, tapped it underneath there, and just work your way, try it around. It's coming out, I'll go underneath and finish that up. All right, there's the cover. A little tricky getting out. You have to lift up, get that dipstick tube out, which may make it tricky putting it back in with the sealant there on there. But so there's the uh, solenoid pack we got to get out. I think there's a, uh, you can't just take the pack off. You got to take the whole back thing off because then that pack's bolted from underneath to that. So you can see all the little uh, bolts on there. So I'll start zipping those out. I think the only electric connection I gotta get out in here is uh, this one down under there, right there. The rest of them, these upper ones in that, will come with the whole back and I can get them out on the bench. All right, I disconnect this electrical connection here. Now I gotta get all these, uh, I think there's 21 of these seven millimeter bolts, not the, uh, Torx head ones, but the seven millimeter. 21 of them all the way around there. All right, I got all those uh, seven millimeter bolts out, except for one there. So you still gotta get this, uh, this, uh, this thing right here for the, I don't know if it's a detent thing. 25 uh, Torx, one of them right here it's, comes out of the slot and then up under here, there's some tubes, three tubes up under there. As I'm backing, as we're backing this valve body off, we gotta make sure those stay in there. I mean, they could come out, but we'll try to keep them in there. And then when we lift it out, we gotta make sure this 
guide pin doesn't get bent, so we got to come up and out of that. All right, I got the last uh, six millimeter out of there. Now this might have to pry a little bit on this valve body to start it. So I got two more bolts down there. Okay, so the last two bolts I, I didn't see were above this right here. And then the tip from the Motor City Mechanic guy is uh, when you're prying this out, you get a needle nose on here, up against here, on these tubes, and pry back on them. And that should leave them in place. I think I got them loose. There's three of them. Let's work them one at a time. I think they're loose. Now I gotta move it up off that pin and it should be able to get it out. All right, it lifted out without much issue. A lot of fluid came, but. Here's those tubes. Oh, they came out a little bit. They're seated in the back too. And then there's this rubber spacer around them keeps them in line from moving up and down left to right so they'll line back up when we push it back in all right here it is on the bench there's the new one there's the old one and I've got to take these torques out and that'll release the solenoid pack on the other side There's a couple electrical connections. This one right here. It's like a two-stage one. This black piece and the red one. The red one first and the black one. And then this one down here, which apparently gets fragile. There's a tab on the front side of this, or the back side. Wiggle those wires out. We'll get that disconnected, we'll flip it over, unscrew this, and we'll, we'll test it, compare the numbers to uh, the new one. See if we can find out what went bad on it. Okay, you gotta pop this red piece up and squeeze it. And then it's come out. Just got both those out. All electrical's out. Flip it over and undo the torques. This one. I gotta wipe all this down. Check this uh, one I took out. So terminal two. One point nine. Number 
seven. Point seven. Number eleven. Three oh two one. Point four. Uh, number fourteen. Three oh one six. Fifteen. Three hundred three. Sixteen. Three hundred point six. Seventeen. One point eight. Eighteen. Three oh two. Nineteen. One point eight. Seven point one. There's a flyer and twenty one. One point eight. So this DC solenoid is the odd one out, 7.1 ohm. I'm not sure what that relates to, it's that clutch, uh, high clutch or whatever that one was called, but I don't know, hopefully this fix it. I think there's going to be torque to, uh, well, I'll look it up. I think it's 55 inch pounds.
All right, it's ready to go back in. I'll go clean off the inside there a little bit on the engine. All right, slipped it up in there. The tubes are in. Now to put this detent thing back in, you gotta make sure you get this uh, this angle piece on the outside here, else it'll smush it. And then it, this odd bolt, you gotta you know you gotta work it in a little bit, but it should go in all right. All right, got all those bolts back in. Almost missed one. It was stuck to the bottom of my magnetic tray, or you know, on the side of it. But you can tell where there's a lot of extra holes. But you can tell where the bolts go as uh, you know, there's witness marks from where they were previously. So got them all torqued in. I'll clean the uh, the mating surface around the outside, and then clean the uh, cover up here. Scrape the old silicone off. Put a bead on there and maybe I'll do a couple trial uh, fits so I know how to work it in there so I don't mess up the bead and throw it back on there. All right, got everything buttoned up. I'll uh, let this RTV, the sealant dry overnight and uh, we'll check it out tomorrow. All right, just to recap. Um, I don't know, I put maybe 40 some miles on it today, some city, some highway, and it's shifting better than ever before. Running good. Um, before you'd go out and you get a couple miles, and when it got warm, it would go into limp mode, and I think it was getting stuck in second gear. Um, but yeah, it seems to be running good. It's uh, it's crazy because uh, if these guys remanufacture, that means, you know, you there's solenoids that are out there available to somebody. It's probably like a $5 solenoid that goes bad, but you gotta replace the whole uh, pack, which I guess isn't, you know, that big a deal. Uh, like I said, I paid probably 140 some dollars for mine, delivered next day. So, 